I'm not pacing it right now. One more. That pause. Just enough time to move the car. Because oh. <laughs> I was a block away. It's too hard to walk away tonight, right? No, I figured. Dangerous neighborhoods. You know how it is out here. The street lights, the criminal element. The rough streets of Marinwood is how you call them. Yeah. God, you never know who's walking oh, with what. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, Oh, oh my God! We did fun. not see one homeless person. Not, all we saw were foreign-speaking tourists. But it was in the neighborhood it was just immaculate. It's, you don't even realize. You know, it isn't like San Francisco that you see downtown. Yeah. Oh. Except, except some of the stairs are killers. Yeah. 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 Well, the people are downtown because people go to That's work true. and they're out on the sidewalks. Like yeah. one street the hands out works right. Right. with lots of foot traffic. Like right in the heart of it, so you don't need to park on the sidewalks. Yeah. Like, oh, you're way down, down there. Like the two blocks. You're all the way down to Park Ridge. I'm like, well, no, 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 no. I'm like, we know we're about Morgan County Castro. Yeah, section. yeah. Those two blocks south are like in the town. So it's like one block uh, west. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we came out of closed session at 724. 724, thank you. Uh, nothing to report. And let's see. All right, so let's jump into the agenda. Does anybody have any changes, additions, anything? Can I, can I ask you a quick uh, case uh, about uh, the closed session? Are you in litigation right now? Uh, Eric, you want to? Uh, there's been a suit filed. That's all I can tell you about. So you're you're not you're not going to court? Or, uh, I don't. It's in the early stages. There's been a suit filed. There, it really is not something that can be discussed in open session where it currently stands. Do I have a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, consent calendar. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. I second. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, give a run a minute to review. And any questions? Questions. Do I need to abstain since I didn't attend the budget hearing? Mm -hmm. And the minutes are in? Well, Eric says no. Are you, you not? We discussing the consent calendar? <clears throat> the board is, yes. The board, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yes, I'd like to make one comment. I'd like to, um, once and for all, reject any um, effort to create a written policy for communication responses from the district manager and to remove that from any minutes going forward. Can I ask what, why no, the board we discussed? Are we on, on the Stephen, it's with the board right now. We're we're talking about the, the consent calendar, it's correct? With the board right now. That's right. So I'm speaking to something that's in the minutes, which is part of the consent calendar. <coughs> that we had uh, Sol Ed, but no pg &E. The PG on which one? For well, electric, for the PG whole month. electric. Uh, it has been paid. That is still got an open claim that is going with it, but I've actually paid it in full, even though it still has an open claim associated with it. And then uh, depending on the outcome of the claim, uh, we will. It was paid today. It was paid this month. Oh, so okay, because I didn't see anything in this month. Yeah. All I saw were the street lights and the gas. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments from the board? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any comments from the public? <clears throat> sure. I wanted to find out who is S Monkey? C Contact S Monkey. Paid Constant Contact grand. and Survey Monkey? Our marketing? I see. So you paid him four grand? 
for surveys? No. There's probably a whole bunch of other things too, but I only have X amount of the space to write what marketing is for. So. All right, I see. Okay. And um, I guess it is a general question. Regarding uh, like the tennis classes, uh, I see he got paid six thousand. Do we make money on that? Is that is there is that uh, what what is our portion on that? So the percentage split um, for the tennis classes, I believe we are at an eighty twenty split with okay. our for revenue sharing. So we would have made about twelve hundred bucks. Okay. All right, I don't have anything more specific on that as far as uh, as far as the agenda is concerned. Um, I think. So we're just on the consent calendar right now. Well, okay. You just said we're on the consent calendar and the agenda now. No, so we're not on the agenda. We're on the consent calendar only. I'm sorry, consent calendar and last month's minutes. Are we on that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think uh, perhaps for the benefit of Linda, you should repeat what you uh, said, uh, Jeff, but uh, I'll leave that up to you. Happy to. I'm advising that we reject any um, movement to have a written policy of communication response from the district manager. Our, our staffing precludes us from getting into any um, strict requirements on um, responses. And I'd like to have that removed permanently and from the minutes. Oh, okay. So, um, you know, it, it's an ongoing issue of reporting on the uh, meetings. And um, for example, there was really uh, quite an insulting finish to last uh, month's meeting uh, where uh, Linda had requested exactly what you're complaining about, Jeff, which is what is the policy for the manager to communicate with the public? Now, I think that's perfectly reasonable. She's uh, addressed it five times. She was ignored, and then she was interrupted, and then the president said her brain wasn't working. Not my and, brain, her brain. Yeah, no, I, I, I understand. <laughs> but that's what should be reported. And if you're not reporting, if you're being very selective on what you're reporting, you're not reporting the facts. And you're really, you know, you're basically creating a falsehood. Um, and then lastly, I would say, it's fine that Jeff doesn't want to talk about uh, policies, but that does, he doesn't get to shut out the public's requests for such things. So actually, as a board, I think that we all agree with what Jeff said and support that. Well, that's, that's fine, but you can't, you don't, we, we live in a democracy and you don't, you're, you're not rulers like you, you, I mean, the rule is that we get to participate in our government. Thank you, Stephen. Um, I'm going to call the question on the consent calendar. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, so I'm, I can ask public, you don't write law. public comment open time for items not on the agenda. Okay, <clears throat> my comment concerns the board agenda bylaws, Article 8, Agenda, Article 8, Agenda, Section 8, Setting of the Agenda. Okay. Any member of the public may request that a matter directly related to district business be placed on the agenda of a regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Directors, this is your bylaws, uh, subject to the following conditions. The request must be made either verbally during an appropriate part of a public meeting, which is what I always do, or submitted in writing to the district manager. The second condition is the board president shall be the sole judge of whether the public request is or is not a matter directly related to district business and shall decide in consultation with the district manager whether or not to include the item on the agenda. So I've chosen to follow the bylaws and request a district business matter be added to a board agenda at a point in the agenda where you're asking for requests for future meeting agenda items. 
This is part of the board bylaws. I am being discriminated against by not being allowed to make a request at that time in the board meeting. Uh, I was told, or I was requested to send, <coughs> send the president an email, but your bylaws don't say anything about that. The bylaws say send an email to the district manager. So, if you want to allow the public discrimination, uh, if, you would, if you wish to allow public discrimination when determining who can or cannot request a future agenda item, then I suggest that you change your bylaws to state that the board president is allowed to select which public members can be chosen for that item. And if, like a month ago, the president has no brain, then that maybe that also should be put into the bylaws because I was discriminated against. And smirking and shaking your head doesn't help, Miss President. It, it really doesn't help. So anyways, those are my comments, and I don't uh, wish to have anyone <coughs> respond to them. I don't have any questions about them. So thank you very much. Thank you. Any other public comments? Sure. So um, each month we gather here. Unfortunately, kind of like uh, feuding siblings, but it doesn't really have to be that way. We all love our community. We all want the best for our community. We all want a good future for our community. And, um, you know, tonight we're considering the budget, which has the highest expenditures uh, in the CSD history. And apparently, I, I got the we, we're not setting aside for the rainy day fund. Now, we all know rainy days happen, and uh, even this last year, we have two lawsuits or three lawsuits that are cooking up that are going to put us in, so sorry, in the did, black. Can I just, the, you're talking about the budget, which is actually the next agenda item. I, so this is for I'm sorry, this is, this is, this is, this is uh, open time, and Stephen, the, the subject matter, the agenda. please, I would like you to stop interrupting me You're because this is part of what I'm saying and I'm glad that we now have a good demonstration from the start. I have looked at all the meetings and on average you spend four, 14 to 25 times interrupting the public during the meetings. You also complain that, that the meetings run on too late. Well, perhaps the best way to conduct a meeting is in uh, a, a civil fashion. You speak, I speak, and ask, and we move on. And maybe we engage each other because we all have something to share. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to district matters, uh, item G1, proposed district budget for the year 2018-19. Do I have a motion to approve? Uh, so moved. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, any discussion? Sorry. I guess. I feel like we've talked about this uh, so much. We have. We've talked about it a lot of, you know, several prior agendas. Uh, I will just note a couple of things that have changed since the last meeting uh, that I put in my notes. Um, added uh, some consultant fees for a second actuarial study we need to do, both related to GASB 75, which specifically addresses OPEB uh, liabilities, which in our case is retiring health. So we need two studies that are going to be done during the fiscal year. So the complete costing, I've got a formal uh, quote on that, is in there. And then I also added costs associated with the purchase of a, a camera, microphone, and mounting hardware uh, for use in this room for recording and publishing board meetings. Those were allocated across the board. Uh, otherwise, we've talked about this budget quite a bit. Uh, just in brief response, the expenditures are actually down 5% from just last year. Um, as far as total expenditures go, uh, revenue is also down 2% from last year. A lot of that was due to the inflated estimates we put in for the FEMA claims. Um, 
this does set aside actually a 66% increase year over year in terms of contributions to the OPEB trust reserve. Uh, it also identifies another $100,000 towards a uh, eventual capital reserves fund. Uh, so that's 100,000 for the year that we're currently in, plus 100,000 for next fiscal year. So there's a nice start to that, as well as uh, at year end, you'll have a significant amount started towards your open trust reserve as well. Mm -hmm. Any questions here? I have two qu question on two items in the fire budget 5220910 capital outlay improvements. Is that $12,000 for the HVAC for the firehouse? Yes. And then the item under it, $43,000, is that the payment on the Type Correct. 1 engine? How many more years do we have that to enjoy? I believe eight. It was a 10-year uh, payment term. Okay. Thank so you. I believe there's eight payments remaining. Just confirm. Yeah. Right. We're good. We only paid one, right? Put the salary paper. I think they did down payment. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. And then, and then we paid the all these things. Right? We've made two. We've made two. Yeah. Okay. All right. So there's eight to go. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. I'd have to confirm that and look at the amortization schedule. That sounds right after the show. This one will be seven. Right. right. But as we stand on this moment, we have eight more payments. Mm -hmm. when, did it, when, when do we pay these? Uh, typically August. August? Yeah. Okay. One, one month. July, yeah. Year. One, one payment, West America, basically, mm -hmm. sends us a bill and says, yeah. you owe us. It's a little, actually just under that number. Very good. Other questions, comments from the board? I've asked a bunch of questions and got all my answers. Okay. Anything? Questions? Questions, comments from the public? I have yes. just one little question. Mm -hmm. um, and this is also what the district manager talked about. I hadn't realized that you're going to add for the purchase of the video camera, microphone, and mounting hardware. I think that's fabulous. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Can you just tell me the total amount that that's going to be costing? Uh, I don't know the total amount that it'll cost you. I don't have firm quotes. Luke and I started talking about it. I budgeted, I think, 2500 for it for the time being. Oh, 2500 and that you said was spread over all three mm -hmm. departments. Okay, thank you. Stephen? Uh, yeah, so um, I, it's actually a question. You say that expenditures are down, Eric. Can you be more specific? What types of expenditures are down and which types of expenditures are up? And I, the reason I say that they're up is because I see we've expanded our payroll and we've uh, added positions and that sort of thing. Uh, actually, I'm looking at the bottom line. The budget for total expenditures is 5% less than it was last year. Okay, so it's basically what you're saying is is because you didn't have those inflated figures, that's why it, expenditures are down. Is, is that basically correct? Uh, no. It, it goes throughout the board. Uh, I said mostly on the revenue side, yes. Okay. The, uh, and in looking at this, uh, salaries for regular full-time staff are actually down. Okay. Um, all right, so, um, and I, I didn't see it. The one thing I would like to say about this is that this really deserves um, a real public hearing. M many, many communities use the annual budget as a point of contact with the public. And um, I think you would all do your jobs better and the public would feel better about the, the district if you, did greater outreach at least once a year, annual meeting. Um, it's a tradition in many communities and there's no reason why it shouldn't be here. Okay, that's all I actually have to say right now. So I just want to say we did have a public hearing about this. So, at um, 6 o'clock, so on the Tuesday, monthly meetings yeah. from the start. So, we actually meet once a month to the people that come down. It's yeah. phenomenal, but we get a great deal. Yeah, I did post it a couple extra times on next door and again to say that the budget's been published as well for the hearing date. I actually went to ask me a couple questions about that. All right, I'll call the question. All those in favor of the budget as presented? Aye. 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 Thank you, Eric, for your work on this. It's a team. All right, moving on, update on this ESS committee. 
I can speak to that or Jeff. There isn't much to say. There's nothing new to report. We have not met in the last two months, and we're just waiting for San Rafael now. So the ducks are all, uh, yeah, we're, we're essentially waiting. At our next meeting, we're going to focus on looking at the committees, essentially wrapping up. Um, you know, if there's any further work for the committee to do or bringing it back to a board level for board input. Um, we also, um, after the ESS meeting was um, canceled last time, we did get a response, however um, disappointing, from CalPERS. Um, we had asked a bunch of, a, a number of very, very clear questions about scenarios and in the give and take, um, we're led to believe that um, we would be using our staff salary pension numbers to get some sort of quantitative response back from CalPERS. We got nothing back of the kind. Um, it, instead of a month, it took <coughs> two and a half months. They came back to us, or to Eric, with, um, I would say, some extremely general and very common comments, but on top of that, there was also the um, disclaimer of, oh, if you want information on that particular item or that particular item, there'll be a cost for that. Um, so we have had a response. Um, it is not what we expected, and um, I have to say that I'm disappointed. Um, I don't know that there's any particular uh, reason to go back to those people. They seem to be able to calculate their numbers very, very nicely when they want to bill you. But they don't seem to be able to do it to, you know, play out a scenario which could be very impactful for this district depending upon what um, particular um, decisions we have to make in the future. So that's all I can say. Um, hopefully we'll be a little bit more from San Rafael in the next meeting. At some point in, in this discussion, we were talking about you know, who's in the driver's seat. Is it San Rafael or is it us regarding coming to some kind of an agreement? And I just go back to the chief's activity summary and note that 49% of all of our calls, not counting mutual aid to San Rafael, are to the two JPA areas to San Rafael. And I think that's a very important bargaining point when and if we ever get to that point of bargaining. And I think that that's a very good point and that that's probably, I think, why in a way this bringing this back to the board because I do think it's probably going to end up touching into the shared services agreement, um, you know, going back to it and then bringing that out. So, yeah. Maybe Can I ask something? a question directly related to what you just said? Or I'll write it down and I'll ask it later if you'd like. Yeah, let's finish here and then we'll Okay. You, you might be right next though. Anything else from the board? No, Linda? Oh, thank you. Um, Herb, what percentage did you say are calls that we go into St. Rafael? Into the JPA area is 49% last month. Okay, so let's, 50 let's say just 50%. And what is the percentage of San Rafael calls that come into Marinwood? Not excluding, I mean, we're not talking about the paramedic calls, correct? We wouldn't be talking we're about paying that. No, I'm talking about cover. Paying for that. Just, I'm talking about cover. I don't have that off the tip, off the actual facts, but the number of emergency calls that San Rafael responds to in Marinwood is five or less a month. Oh, because just in the past month, I saw two right in my neighborhood. Yeah. So, but that was in my two-street neighborhood. I think it's about five a month, give or take. Five. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, a couple things. Um, first of all, have you guys talked to uh, Damon Conley? Um, uh, I would think he would be the natural person to try to uh, uh, broker a, uh, an agreement, get a little movement. Um, not only was he a city councilor uh, in San Rafael, he's of course our um, supervisor, but uh, professionally he is a mediator and uh, he really has um, really excellent communication skills. 
So that's number one. I, I think uh, I'm I'm gonna guess that he would be happy to assist uh, uh, the, the district. Uh, it, well, you know, both both entities. Um, second of all, um, I do think that Herb is correct. I mean, we do have uh, a strong hand, but if we're only playing. <laughs> If we don't have any options, we really don't have a strong hand. I mean, it's basically they can weigh us out to, you know, whatever, however, whatever kind of deal that they can get from us. So I, I do think that if you don't have uh, viable alternatives um, and, you know, go crazy, including uh, the, the volunteer option, look at them, you know, throw them out there make them part of the discussion, but, um, you know, keep the, keep it focused. I, I, the reason they're not getting back to you is there's, there's no pressure to, uh, to do a deal, and that has been the problem the entire time. So um, I think you, you all need to readdress this in a different way. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? All right. We will move on to item G. Six, or sorry, Chief Reed, for Commission and Committee's bylaws amendment to incorporate public decorum and enforcement policy. Has everyone had time to review? Yes. Do I have a motion? I'd like a motion to approve this policy. Second. Okay. Discussion. Kurt. Sure. Uh, oh. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said <laughs> Please go. Thank you. Uh, I have a, a picky item. Uh, on the first page, right under B, it talks about the presiding officer. And then you go over to the second page, the sort of the end of the top paragraph, board president. Uh, in paragraph D, board president. Uh, the one down the bottom, board president, seems logical. But I think the two references to board president, the one at the bottom of the first paragraph, at the top of the second page, and the top of the second paragraph, those should say presiding officer. Because theoretically, if the board president was absent, you couldn't use this document. Well, that's why it says presiding, yeah. And only as one. There's two other spots I think you ought to change. To so presiding you're officer. changing everything that's board president to presiding No, not officer. everything. Oh. The last line is probably a reasonable one to be the board president. Oh, yeah. I think presiding officer works in all cases because you're talking about the board, you're talking about the commissions as well. Mm -hmm. It makes sense to say. I don't care. Just we need our existence. Mm -hmm. I think it makes sense as well. So I think it, do we want to ask? Motion to approve the, um, the public decorum and enforcement policy as amended to state presiding officer in all cases as opposed to specific um, normal presiding officers. Okay. I'll second that. Okay, more discussion? Mm -hmm. Questions, comments from the public? Sure. Speak Speak to you. Me. Uh, oh, you go ahead. Oh, okay. So, um, Obviously, what's missing here is this is basically restricting uh, the speech and behavior of the public, and there's no responsibility from you guys. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the decorum from the board is, is pretty atrocious as well. Um, I think uh, I, I was really sad to see this. Uh, it seems like the board is going in the way of uh, if you have a disagreement with a neighbor like the Millers, you let it uh, fester to a lawsuit. If you have a disagreement with the public, you bring in the police and intimidate them and create policies to uh, quell speech. I don't think this is going to pass muster, legal muster. And I would I'd say before you you adopt a policy like this and really make Marinwood look ridiculous, that you really kind of rethink this and, and uh, maybe discuss it with people outside the district. Tell them you have a problem, you want to 
better meetings and how can you achieve that? I can assure you by intimidating the public, threatening and interrupting and bullying, I can see the smirk, Chief. I'm oh, sorry? I can see the smirk, okay? I, I, I put up with a lot of bullying uh, for years here. And I, I, I don't like it any more than you guys. Um, and I guess, I guess what I'm saying is we create the future. And it's if, if you think this is the future that you can move forward without conflict, I think you're being kind of foolish. Thank you. Any other questions, comments from the public? Well, well I was actually going through your existing bylaws, and I was kind of discovering something interesting where you say, uh, be responsible for the orderly conduct of all board meetings in accordance with Rosenberg's rules of order. And then somewhere else it says, uh, well, actually it says, protect the speaker who has the floor from disturbance or interference. And in Rosenberg's rules, it says, can a member of the body interrupt the speaker? And the general rule is no, unless there's a point of privilege, which means you can't hear, or it's cold, or somebody fell down, or point of order, which is uh, not appropriate conduct of the meeting. But it sounds like Rosenberg's rules covers it all, and your bylaws already cover it all. Um, you talk about decorum and you're talking about the public. Well, actually, no. There's something that says, the board of directors shall conduct themselves with courtesy to each other, to the staff, and to the members of the audience present at the meetings. Is that going to be in, left in, or is that being removed? I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't match up the old one and the new one. So is that? Nothing is being removed. Nothing, oh, thank you very much. And, um, and code of conduct about non-discrimination, but rules of order, Rosenberg's rules of order, um, it just sounds to me like this is overkill. And basically before you had Rosenberg's rules and you had your bylaws, which were sort of, uh, and thank you, Herb, I really appreciate your attention. Um, they, they were sort of friendly, like, you're not blaming the board, you're not blaming the public, it's really not pointing to anybody's fault for out of control or conduct or interruptions upon interruptions. I mean, it, it was much more friendly and now I just think this is your authority. You guys are the kings and get out the sword and cut off our heads. I mean, I, I really don't think that this was well thought out. And obviously, this is the first time that the four of you have gotten together to discuss it, and you didn't even discuss it with each other. You didn't even say, yay or nay, this is good, this is bad, this, I like this, I like that. The four of you didn't even discuss this. And I seem to recall Mr. Naylor saying, and this was just at the last meeting, or the meeting before, before we approve something that's brand new, and I think you're referring to Isabella Perry's uh, something or other, I don't know, whatever it was, that we should have one look at it, we should discuss it, and then make the changes, and then send it off for the next month to approve. Well, here you are, boom, somebody wrote this up, and you want to approve it, and no discussion. So it just seems to me like you're jumping the gun, it's way overkill, it's very unfriendly, and from reading what you're saying, it's very obvious why you're doing it. So that's all I want to say. It just, I, I think you all should take another month, or it maybe even five minutes right now, to discuss it among yourselves, because this is the only chance you have to discuss it between all of you, correct? unless it's two people here, two people there. And I just, I just think some discussion needs to be made. This is very, very unfriendly. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I will say I think this is 
long overdue, and I understand that the county council was involved in this, and I think that this is a very well-written policy, and I look forward to improving the decorum at our meetings, and I think that this will be helpful. Um, so I am really grateful that we have this. Uh, any other further comments, questions, discussion from the board? Maybe I was remiss when I made my suggestion to say that I was pleased with the other parts of the document. All right, I have a public question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Moving on to item H, fire department matters, fire activity summary and chief report. Uh, the big change of, obviously was uh, Dan Rotwine, unfortunately left us with a position with San Rafael Fire Department, great for him. Um, it's actually interesting, they have a new hire academy going on now also. Dan had previously gone through that as a Marin with new hire. So he actually left here and went right on the ship in San Rafael. So uh, you know, I'm real happy for him. I'm working on putting together, I had a paramedic list, I called the top three paramedics who all, two of them had been employed by new departments and were interested in one of them wasn't interested in relocating from Sacramento. So I'm putting together a new paramedic list to hire. I actually anticipate a couple of Redwood volunteers will have completed paramedic school by that in the next month or two. So I'm gonna seriously consider looking at an in-house hire, which I think would be great. Uh, in the meantime, I've hired a temporary Brad Davenport from the volunteer rankings who served as a temp previously is gonna fill in for a thousand hours to kind of be a bridge between the, the next hire, so especially going into fire season. So that's taken up a lot of time and vegetation management is on the forefront. I'm working with CSA 13 and Mount Moran to make them finalize communities. There's a lot involved there um, in the so few neighborhoods around Marin, two parts of Marin that are interested in Chipper Bay. So uh, that's uh, taking up a lot of the time. All right, thank you. Uh, you use the term in-house hire uh, it's from like the volunteer rankings, that's what I'm referring to. In, an in-house as opposed to getting a paramedic list. Um, there is a, there's a volunteer who is also a certified paramedic. Not yet, but there's a couple that will be soon. Okay. I'm just curious. Given our, aren't we in the third year of the shared services agreement? Uh, four? Fourth? I mean, we've passed the third year, right? Yeah. And I believe. And We're doing it to service to our residents. Yes, and I'm just curious, does it make sense to hire another paramedic when we can't put that paramedic in the service as a paramedic? I continue to remain optimistic that one day we will be able to, and that if I hire a firefighter, EMT, in that position. Uh, or not. Or not. Hire a full-time employee. That also is an option. Um, but we have to hire someone to bridge the gap. I understand. Like the temporary that I, I understand. Do. It's not a real solid permanent staffing model to continue to use temps. Um, I, I understand that too. But yeah, and which is why I'm doing it temporarily, see how long it works. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Yeah, we, we, do, we do need to make some decisions in the near future and, and a full-time employee is a full-time employee. Either way. Right. I understand where, where you're, what you're saying, yes. Okay. Which leads us into the next thing a little bit. But. Understood. Okay. Uh, any questions, comments, discussion on the report? Questions, comments from the public? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what's happening with that old uh, stove? Is that for sale? See? Is this the new public decorum thing? I don't. Right, so that's not that. part of the fire activity. Well, no, it's about the. Uh, uh, right, that's not. It's it's in the the, the uh, report, and so I, uh, this is under kitchen remodel. Nothing uh, has been decided about the old stove. You're not going to sell it then. Nothing has been decided about the old stove. Well, wouldn't you sell it if you, you okay. couldn't use it? Even. Um, now you also. Uh, did a uh, you have some bids from uh, uh, for the pickup truck? So we're, not, just we're was, not there. We're getting ahead of ourselves. That's not the item that we're on. But it's coming. It's, up. it's in the it's in the report. Well, I I'm sorry. Why am I why what am I missing? Oh, we're this on is H one. Okay, so you're talking about H two. 
Okay. We're not there yet. All right. Okay, any other questions, comments from the public on H1? Okay, let's move on H2, purchase of a new fire department utility truck. So I did get a couple of bids before you, um, and I also additional information on what those trucks would need. Um, so I know what I know as the fire chief here, and I know what we've done previously for our service levels. And part of the service we've provided is to respond on our fire roads to assist injured hikers, bikers, horse people, um, and transport them off the hill so they can be available to any of for transport to the hospital. We can't currently do that. Um, which is why this is before you today. I'm not going to be the fire chief for a real long time into the future. Um, there may be a new fire chief or a new agency who oversees here this place that has some other ideas that I'm not aware of. Um, what this department turns into over the next few years um, could be very different than what it is today. I know that. So I understand this is a substantial purchase for the district. Um, it will allow us to continue to do what we've been doing for a number of years to assist our residents and visitors to provide service to them when they're hurt. But that's not to say things may be drastically different in the next six months. So it's before you because your current fire chief feels like it's an important service that we should continue to provide. And I'm sorry, just to throw it. We have a plan B. Uh, talk to the superintendent of open space. They're going to respond to our emergencies that are off road to help provide transportation for our firefighters to incidents. Um, our type three is available. One of the issues with our type three is we don't have a way to transport those people back off the hill, but it does get our firefighters to the scene to allow treatment of a patient. So there's a not as good plan B as if. In, if we had the actual utility in place. So now it's up to you. Okay, so this is a motion to approve. So do I have a motion to so discuss? I'll move for discussion. Is that a second? I'll second it for discussion. Any discussion? Fair. We have a utility vehicle Correct. that was bought by the district because the county received it and decided it wouldn't work for them, is my understanding of the story. Correct. And it's not a four-wheel drive vehicle. It is a four-wheel drive. It is four-wheel drive? Yes. But, but its condition now is such that it isn't safe to get up on the hill. Correct. Yeah, we've had a couple of issues with it not holding traction or being being able to hold a brake on some of the inclines we respond on. Um, how old is that? Or with what year? 95? Yeah, okay. it's getting up there. Mm -hmm. um, so my question really was, is there a thought, because these are, these are new, right? Correct. Did you look, I mean, is there, is it a possibility of I need to use that? I'm sorry, can you speak up, please? Oh, I was just asking, these seem to be quotes for new vehicles, new vehicles. And I know for myself, personally, I've never bought a new vehicle before. I always buy them used, and so I'm wondering what the options on sort of the secondary market are, if that would bring it down 10, 20. So one of the things you have before you is the fleet rate, the government fleet rate, which is typically there's a pretty considerable savings, and if you were to go to a lot and buy it offline, or buy it directly from a dealer, so there's some savings there. Um, yes, you could probably get a used vehicle for cheaper than what's before you. Um, but, I mean, this is for emergency service delivery. And it's fairly important. So I tend to, Greg Stills made a good point. If you're, if you're using it every day and it's for a, a serious emergency response use, maybe you don't buy the most expensive, you get the second most expensive. I mean, it, it tends to make sense. Now, it, I could research used vehicles. You know, there are used four-wheel drive vehicles with, with limited miles that uh, are very similar to these cars and see what kind of costs there are with those. It's, and again, that's easy to do. Um, yeah, I mean, I just, I, I find this an uncomfortable timing 
for this purchase and I understand that it's a lot of money and given that we don't know what's going to happen going forward I feel like I don't yeah I don't feel good about it I, I, that makes sense. I understand all those reasons yeah. behind it, which is why I preface it in that I only know what I know and what we've been doing here, which may be very different than what goes on here in the future. Right. Yeah. So, Chief, I have a couple of questions. Sure. Um, the Type 3 can go up in open space. Yes. Okay. Um, you can't transport. Correct. Okay. Understood. Um, how often do we go into open space, would you say, on an annual basis? It's sort of seasonal, but a high estimate would be three times a month. Three times a month. Okay. And how often do you think um, we do a medical assist every month? On the open space? Mm -hmm. No, anywhere. Oh, how many times a month? Mm -hmm. uh, all our responses are just for everyone. All responses? 85. Okay, and how many of those require a paramedic? 65. 65. So what we're basically talking about is <clears throat> when we need to make a paramedic response, we have to depend on mutual aid for all intents and purposes. We have to call somebody else when we could. For transport. Yeah, yeah. But if, there, if we're first responders and there is um, a medical event that takes a real paramedic to to do you know right. intervention, we can't do that. But we can we can provide a PLS level care. Correct intervention. But right. if it goes beyond that, we have to wait. Correct. Okay. So I guess my point is this: I'm not saying we're content with that, but that is where we are with the greatest percentage of our medical assists. I can't argue with what okay. you said so far. If that's the way it's going to be for a while, I am just saying that I don't think the cost benefit of purchasing a vehicle that will cost $40,000 right out of the door plus maintenance is good use of taxpayer funds at this point in time. Um, again, I think we can't be everything for everyone in this district. We do not have the, the funds to do that. I think we have to depend on the um, aid of our neighboring communities in those instances where we can't respond because we'd be putting our staff in, you know, unsafe situations, which I think is really what's been brought up a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the backup plan that I put in place. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. And so I would, at least for the foreseeable future, I would recommend that we go with your plan B while further deliberations are made with regard to the future of the service. Thank you. Any discussion? Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I just wanted to know if there was any indication as to turnaround time on this. Like, uh, if we ordered it tomorrow, how long would it take to get to us? Um, the Dodge and the Ford almost immediately are in stock. The Chevys are about six months out now. To follow up on Stephen's comment on another subject, what can we get for the old truck? The old utility? Yeah. Um, how much does Luke willing to pay for it? <laughs> Are you going to use it? <laughs> you know, it, it may be it, not much. I would say you'd be lucky if you got two thousand um, dollars. I would almost see if there was a use for it for the parks department to have an extra vehicle. Um, yeah, it's not a lot. I'm really good at buying and selling cars on Craigslist, so I can maximize and I can get you more than whatever you see yeah. on those prices. I've done it a lot, so. Uh, I mean, even for parts for a car, I mean, if the car was completely broken and whatever, you can always get like 1500 bucks for parts on most cars. Okay, but not enough to really make a dent in no. a purchase, no. Other discussion from the board? Questions, comments from the public? Stephen? Uh, first of all, I, I, uh, I think uh, we want the fire department to have good equipment, but it's not. I'm, I'm glad everyone's thinking about this because 
until we figure out what the future of the department is, making a long-term investment just doesn't seem uh, reasonable. For example, if we were to merge with uh, the county fire, they would certainly have their fleet of vehicles, four-wheel drive vehicles. Uh, in the absence of, uh, you know, addressing this immediate need, I would suggest working out a plan where you can commandeer some of the parks department um, vehicles. Uh, they've got the F-250 and the, uh, uh, the little mule, which uh, have capabilities, and uh, it's better than people dying up there on the hill. So um, I would... I would really encourage the chief to do it. Non-response is not is not acceptable. Any other? Oh yeah, one one other thing, and that is regarding the uh, bid solicitation. It appears that the uh, bid solicitation was not because of, of the amount it wasn't done uh, according to procedure, government purchasing procedure, and um, it seems that uh, the district is mighty selective uh, when they decide to follow the law. So I would suggest that you maintain consistency, otherwise you're going to find yourself in a position of defending the indefensible. Any other questions, comments from the public? Yeah. yeah. Um, to that comment first, um, I just want to let you all know that I found out there is a proprietary bidding service through California government, but we lost the window, okay? We did look into it, I'm not me personally, but I know it was looked into a month or so ago, and this is when y'all were arguing about, no, we don't need it, no, we don't need it, um, and we actually lost the window for the 2018 trucks through this government purchasing specialty thing. That was the Chevy bid. Yeah. That's why the Chevy bid wouldn't be available to the 2019 process. Okay. But There's in any case, um, my first I want to address the comment about we all don't know what's going forward. Obviously we don't. But whether we merge, whether we stay, whether we have volunteers, whatever, this fire department's going to stay. It's not going anywhere. So we're going to need a vehicle to go up into the hills at some time or another. And whether it's, you know, last November or in February with, with the February or March of the broken leg or the heart attack in November. I mean, we, we need to be, if we are the closest to the victim, we should be responding. And we should have a vehicle to respond to. There's so many people that hike up into these hills and everyone who has paid the property taxes for the fire department has the expectation that, God forbid, if something happens to me, like a heart attack, somebody will come and help me. Or the broken leg, you know, um, don't leave me up here for an hour. If you can get to me quickly and splint my leg so it's not going to get worse, I'm going to it, you might be able to help the person avoid some pain and suffering and possibly some future disability by getting to the person sooner. But if you get there later, they could be dead. Um, I, I truly think that the closest fire department should be able to help. And if our fire department just says to dispatch, no, don't bother us if there's a call in the hills, don't bother us, What's that going to look like to all the other fire departments that help us when we need help? You know, if we can't go up into the hills to, to save somebody and to save their life, save their future disabilities, save their agony and pain and, and everything else, I just think it's immoral for us to just say, no, thanks, we'll see you later, let somebody else find you. That's my comment. Everybody say no? No. 
no. There were three no's and one yes. Okay, I, according to Rosenberg's rules, um, it would, it's requested that whoever's in charge repeat the motion and repeat blah, 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 blah. So can you please tell me who voted yes? Er. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, so the date of the next fire commission meeting is June 5th. Now moving on to item I, park and recreation matters. We have the draft minutes of the commission meeting from April 24th. I just have one typo in there, Carolyn. Yes. We have that in the second page, um, second paragraph, um, bowls instead of moles. No, it's actually not a typo, it's, it's a bowl. It's yeah. a bowl? Uh, different that type of department. Okay, I learned something new. Thank you. That is totally awesome. It's a virtual normal bowl. They migrate. I read that. I was like, no way. That is a virtual bowl. Okay. Yeah, right. I'm not sure. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments from that? Uh, 
So what I have included, uh, and a lot of these things have kind of just come together very recently, thanks uh, in part to a lot of hard work that uh, Mr. Hansel's put forward. Um, we have uh, made it to the point where we kind of have a generalized site layout that has been included in here. Uh, I purposely kind of tried to put these out in color for you all. They are uh, uh, designed specifically to show the kind of spacing of the current facility versus the spacing of the new facility. And then what it also is included, just to be clear, is uh, diagrams for the building design itself, as well as some conceptual, they don't like it, as well as some uh, conceptual renderings that have been uh, uh, put together, kind of displaying what it, it could look like under this design. Um, the kind of one of the big key things here is the, as you'll notice, the current site layout um, calls for removing the modular. Uh, previous ones, they kind of looked at it as keeping the modular where it was and building in front of it. But the more we went through this, the more it made sense to incorporate not only that space but those functions into a uh, single building that would then also allow us to reduce the total footprint over the long term. The uh, uh, otherwise, as you kind of go through, uh, and I, a couple of the questions that I did get was, you know, the, what is a conditioned area? Um, condition, when I listed on here, and Bill, you're free to jump in, please, is, uh, you know, you're looking at something fully enclosed, finished, insulated, the whole nine yards. Uh, uh, the open parking area, while it is enclosed, it does have open air areas more towards the top of it. Um, so with that said, uh, as you kind of look through and you look at some of the sites, um, one of the things we're also doing is you know kind of going through and looking at what all of these things may be and then potentially working with a uh, cost estimator as, who's, who can break this down by component for us. Um, the other things I'm still waiting on, uh, which I expect to actually receive this week, is going to be a, a cultural resources and archaeological study um, that will come back to us. Uh, and then eventually we'll be able to start to put all of these things together so that ideally still with the same end goal of, you know, by the end of June, hopefully being able to submit a site plan review application. Uh, I should also say Herb has obviously been heavily involved in some of these aspects as well. Uh, with that said, I would probably just either, if Bill has something he wants to add or if there's some specific questions the board may have, we can go from there. Um, where the vehicles would be stored, it appears to me anyway that, that there is that open space. It's not fully enclosed. Is there an advantage to that? Is there some, I mean, rain can get in, right? Yes, no. In the, in the covered area? Yeah, it's covered, but it, it's got a uh, portion of the wall that's still open to the elements. Right, right, yeah. right. So is there a reason for not enclosing where the vehicles would be stored? Yeah, the, well, my impression of the program um, and the use was that there's a lot of flexibility here that happens, that um, having vehicles stored is one thing, but it's not a specifically a garage. Um, per se, you know, that so when vehicles are pulled out, those areas can be used as, as workspace. Maybe things are sitting there longer. Maybe there's, uh, you know, the truck comes in and out every day. And so, um, so I don't see it so much as the sort of the specifically the vehicle storage area. Um, it's, it's more of a flexible workspace. Um, the original thing actually worked backwards from the condition space that was minimally needed. So the 16, the half of that roof or half of that area that was uh, that's under roof that's that's enclosed and insulated and uh, heated. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, that square footage was sort of minimally necessary for the guys to store things for them to do work. Um, it was it's kind of a reduction to a degree of of uh, their preferred original plans mm -hmm. where they had thrown out some much larger square footage. Right. And w in the discussions with with Eric. Um, what my suggestion was, was you're going to the expense of creating a slab. Uh, you're going to the expense of creating a roof and columns and structure for that roof. Um, there is an incremental cost increase if you make it, you know, uh, 1,600 square feet versus 3,200 square feet. But the first chunk of cost is just getting the concrete and the roof there and the structure. Mm -hmm. So it seemed to make sense to extend the 1,600 in condition space 
take advantage of you know cost efficiency uh, of, of just extending the roof out but not going further at least initially to condition it because the condition space can cost substantially more when you think about you know that, closing and costing and all the other things so yeah. it's it's i mean it's interesting point I, I i think that it could be you know if down the line uh, the district wanted to enclose it you know that could easily be in, you know enclosed mm -hmm. but at least you get some economy of scale so that's where it came from and, and again i i just sort of hesitate thinking of it as specifically well that's the parking area it's i think the guys would be working there i think at a certain point if they needed excess space for you know a few weeks or a month or whatever i would be surprised if then you know the vehicles get stored more in the courtyard you know, mm -hmm. the front of the rear courtyard. Mm -hmm. um, but it gives that option. That's, that's how I looked at it. I see. Okay. And by the way, thanks for the opportunity to, to, you know, to do work. It's nice to kind of just supply some ideas and visualize some, some things and, and care about what you know, that area looks like. Yeah, absolutely. Very interesting. Um, the modular building, would there be use for that elsewhere, potentially? Potentially. Potentially, it's uh, we talked classroom on several occasions. Mm -hmm. It's it's mm -hmm. lived a pretty good, useful life. Uh huh. What was it? So uh, before I would put any level of kids or anything like that, that I would want to look at that. It mm -hmm. might also have some level of resale value. We don't have further value for it. We'd have to find a place to keep it. Uh, wherever you move it, place it to it. We need the infrastructure we run uh, for some of the facets that are in there, as well as permitting and so on and so forth. Of the, we haven't thought that far down the road. I was just curious. I mean, you know, this is new. This is different. And, uh, you know, there seem to be some opportunities there as well. Uh, that hasn't escaped. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, the people that showed up at the meeting that are contiguous to the proposed um, structure, um, did they have any particular, I mean, did they go ballistic? Did they have any comments one way or the other? Uh, well, I don't want to speak for them. Um, I, I would, uh, to answer your question, no, nobody went ballistic and nobody uh, did cartwheels either. You yeah, know, I true. mean, uh, I think uh, uh, their primary look is, okay, how is this going to directly impact me? Sure. Because I can, you know, pop my fence and I'm standing on top of it kind of a thing. Uh -huh. Um, I haven't really uh, gotten any sort of follow-up from any of them uh, since that one particular meeting. Uh, you know, I, I think that they, again, I don't want to speak for them, uh, to be honest with you, Jeff, I, but no, there was no strong pushback, nor was there strong, this is great. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's certainly different, and it certainly, at least in my mind, uses the space very efficiently. Uh, that was one of the big challenges for uh, Bill, um, you know, kind of as well as our urban why we did all these other various surveys and topos and looking at, you know, placement, reducing, um, you know, and I, Bill and I worked pretty well together just in saying, okay, here's where we started, where can we get this down to, we've shown this to the park guys, they like the design, uh, the flow, you know, you got to keep in mind that rather than having uh, front doors, entrances are going to be through the long as the sure. size exactly. uh, with an ability actually if, if really desired to be able to drive all the way through the entire facility mm -hmm. not just into the initial bay uh, covered area but right. to roll up and be able to pull a vehicle all the way into the workshop area and out the other side of the workshop area mm -hmm. understood yeah interesting design for sure it's I, a great idea okay thank you other questions, comments, discussion from the board? Well, I thought it was a really interesting design. I'm kind of looking forward to see what the rest of our governmental agencies think of the placement. Mm -hmm. That's all. I've heard that the uh, horseshoe contingent is happy with it. That's important. <laughs> <laughs> I was curious. That's all that really matters, right? As long as you've got that. Yeah. <laughs> As long as we can put a cone of silence in there, it'll be okay. <laughs> uh, questions, comments from the public? Linda. Well, so since I didn't see the presentation, I do have a couple questions. What exactly is the entry court? What, what is that? 
Is it a building? Is it, is it a patio? Is it an open space? It's is an it open area that's fenced. It's an open area that's fenced. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's where, like, you'll have individual storage bins of, full of tools and stuff? Uh, or materials or uh, oh, okay. things along those lines, uh, vehicles, whatever. It's uh, uh, things that don't necessarily need to be enclosed or, or only that okay. are permanent. But the know. idea and the goal behind all of this is when you go out there now and you see things that are just kind of out and open, every single thing is going to be behind the fence. As you go through there, there's not going to be material veins that are sitting outside. That's, that's the goal. That's the intention of what we're trying to design. There's not going to be loose pieces of equipment sitting around outside. Everything will be behind a fence. Mm -hmm. okay. And Eric, if I can add... Um, yeah, please, Bill, please. Uh, to hopefully help. That there's also, um, what that also affords you as well as the visual cleanliness mm -hmm. is that you get multiple levels of security. You got an eight-foot fence to go through before then you get into another covered area that you imagine might have, you know, a little bit more protection, and, you know, lighting, and, and then and then the closed area itself. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. So first, I, I really want to thank you, um, Eric, for putting out the larger picture mm -hmm. because it's much easier to see what you know what's in there. Um, but can you can anybody tell me what trees are going to be removed? Uh, the There's three big trees. Yeah, they're all pines. I'm sorry. They're all pines. Big pines. They're Pine, all pine, pine, pine pines. Trees. Pine. Right. Right. I know, but which mm -hmm. ones will be removed? That's what I asked. Um, are they staying? Or are they? Growing? No, some some would. I believe that there's two that would need to go. Two out and of three. And you can kind of see them in here. Yeah. Well, there's more like six or seven that are there. Oh, there's three big ones. In that immediate immediate area. Yeah. yeah. The only trees marked for removal are all pines. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, then. One, one question, well, can you sell Gary's old office? Can you sell the trailer? I don't know. No. Okay, I don't know. And um, one other question about the open part at the top. Is there some way that that will be critter-proofed? So that you're not going to have raccoons and rats and all kinds of things climbing up and going in there? That was something that we discussed. It could easily uh, be if netting or something along that line was needed. It could, okay, be, some, it could be put in. <coughs> uh, but keeping in mind that the conditioned area won't be open. Just uh, Oh, no. But the, where they put the trucks mm -hmm. and uh, the stuff. So it could be. Okay. And then um, my only comment is the, the picture looks like it's an Eichler to me, and we don't have Eichlers in that neighborhood. I mean, we might have them in the berries, but that whole neighborhood, Pinewood, Quietwood, you know, right behind and everything, they're not Eichlers, so. I, but Miller I Creek just, right across the street. I just think, I'm sorry? Miller Creek right across the street from that driveway. Oh yes, there's about four or five. Yeah. I know, there's about four or five on Miller Creek across from the community center, mm -hmm. but all the other houses surrounding on Miller Creek and Pinewood and Quietwood, they're all no, I know. regular looking houses. Mm -hmm. Other, they're not I Eichlers. I just, that's all, I just wanted to make a comment that it kind of looks like somebody's Eichler. That's all I wanted to comment about. Thanks for going for big bucks. <laughs> just, I, well, we can call it an Eichler or we can call it a, a flat roof building. But I think if we were to try to copy the Cape Codish style. I'm not talking about what, copying no, Cape Codish. No, but if you were to do that, I think what Bill has done, and, and I appreciate it, is keep that roof as low as possible so as not to affect those neighbors. You can use the Marinwood model. OK, think of it as the Marinwood model. Looks like we can put We can put a filigree door up. It's Bill's Eichler. Maybe you could donate your house. <laughs> Okay, thanks. Aside from the pic, the, pic, the pictures and this and that, um, are there any, have there been any choices of building materials and stuff like that, like exterior walls and that kind of thing? In the presentation, I just, did you, you didn't include that no. sheet. So um, uh, one thing that I had talked about um, was, as a starting point, um, uh, 
a few a few different ideas. One was that it's, you know, it's obviously a very natural area. You want to bring as much of that warmth into it as, as possible. Um, so, for example, the siding of the fences, I was I had included uh, some images of a, a vertical stained gray, uh, uh, whitewashed kind of a fence, maybe like a light gray, but something that was you know had some some warmth to it, um, but was you know serviceable, and, um, and and that would be the the main cladding that would go up to eight feet. <coughs> Um, the columns and structural, just for cost and simplicity, would be maybe a painted enameled uh, you know, metal steel columns. Um, I think there, you know, we, we talked about some options in terms of wood. The uh, the underside of the roof, which is substantial because you see that that structure would be similar to what you see, you know, in the pool building in terms of blue laminated columns oh, uh -huh. with exposed uh, uh, you know decking mm -hmm. on the underside and. Um, uh, you know the the upper skylight area. When the idea of the roof is really to keep it low on the neighbor side, and then to, to bring in sudden light into the workspace, and then filter that with some vertical uh, slats, like wood slats, maybe one by threes, and they might be the same type of wood as the um, as the siding. So it's not a huge pallet. It's it would be I think kind of similar to to the other you know buildings here, mm -hmm. and in terms of uh, you know, the other aesthetic influence um, that I talked to Eric early on about was, um, you know, the Miwoks don't have very much architectural influence, but, um, but there is, you know, lead to kind of architecture, and so the, the doing the angled columns at the front is a little bit of a modern nod to, mm -hmm. to that and trying to do a little bit something, you know, special with, the, with those elements. Yeah. So that's, that was where the sensibility was, was basically coming. And I imagine that, um, uh, you know, there would be a landscape level, landscaping level on top of this in terms of, you know, shrubbery and hedges and other planting that might, you know, again, kind of grow it into the landscape. And Joe Runco had volunteered uh, a little bit of time to kind of, he had provided any drawings for this, but, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to, to weigh in on that, you know, if it, if it were to go forward. Very good. That's very clear. Yeah. Was that shooting? Yeah, a little more. Yeah, shooting for that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, to, to much of Bill's point, aesthetics are you know second, just right behind uh, functionality. Sure. You know, especially where it's going, and it needs to look good. It needs to look clean. Uh, it you know definitely represents, in my opinion, an upgrade to the situation we currently have. But with that said, I could throw anything out there, and it would be an upgrade to the situation <laughs> we currently have. Uh, but a lot of thought went into exacting placement, how to do it, entry, you know, egress into everything else, uh, just really trying to think it through, looking at some of the other things. Uh, Bill did a really good job incorporating kind of the physical needs assessment that the park guys had put together in terms of what everything needs to go. Um, Bill's been great to work with, just to say it out loud in a meeting. He's been very uh, uh, attentive and accommodating and has listened to everybody uh, and has incorporated a lot of neat ideas into this. So, where we're at right now, it's you know obviously still very conceptual, but uh, it, it, it's starting to take shape. I think yeah. you know if I can add to, to what you're saying, thanks, I appreciate it. I appreciate Irv's time and clarifying much of the site stuff as well. But um, you know, one one thing it's it's nice to see to advance this to this kind of a level. It's not so much you know that you've taken a design that far and it's done or or anything. It's more that there's now there's a lot of information there that can be more specifically priced and from that point on you can go in all sorts of different directions uh, even if it's in a different site or you know whatever at least you're getting a knowledge base here where you can start to compare an actual thing rather than just somebody waving their hands around and saying like well, well there's a box that you can stick here and you know, so I think it's I think it's important uh, with clients and the architectural process that that we get to something that looks fairly real and it can be really judged and you can say that's more than what we need or less and and here are some some more reliable costs about it. So that's we're in a process, and I appreciate uh, you know like moving forward to invest in that. Yeah. So are we on track for what June thirtieth? Is that here? Uh, we're hoping. Yeah. You know everything seems to bring new days, but that's still the goal, and I still think we could be on track. Um, uh, I'll close it out, but I'll let Eric have a question or a comment. Oh, well, just uh, Bill reminded me of something that the, the 
process we have to go through in the county is called site plan review. And it's a brand new process. And I'm not 100% aware of it. As compared to the old process, it's what's called design review. Mm -hmm. And this is in there because of the way the countywide plan sets up criteria for in certain areas. My point being what Bill mentioned, and what we are probably going to need as part of that application is some kind of a conceptual landscape plan because the biological assessment talks about re-landscaping the areas uh, where the old buildings were and we're going to, I assume, put some kind of a nice trail around this building uh, to continue the, the walking path uh, down that uh, panhandle section. So it's something, I don't know if somebody can talk nice to Joe. I got it. Yeah, I should have volunteered him for it. He's already well, done some well, I volunteered him <laughs> for, for the original conceptual drawings to get some discussion going. Right. And, uh, but we, we may need something to include in our application, is my point. So well, and I think to your plan. point, I'm sorry? Vegetation management plan may need to be included in the site plan. Is it 88? need 88 too? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The other aspect too, at least especially as what was suggested in the biological plan, is that because where the current building sits so close on the creek bank is a reparation of that area, um, and those are pretty specific guidance that we know what it is in terms of uh, native pl uh, replantings, uh, clearing out old stuff, uh, what zones along the thing, different kind of plant. We have all that information because we actually did a project like that not too long ago. Any other comments, Stephen? Yeah, um, yeah, I actually have a lot of comments. First of all, uh, congratulations to Bill. I think uh, aesthetically he's done a, a nice job, and it's uh, it's kind of a shame to you, you know, bury his talents in a, a building, a functional building that won't be seen uh, widespread by the community. I think that we would do far better to retain Bill. Uh, to create a structure, uh, a focal point for the community, uh, I suggest a s stage or a sitting area or something where, um, you know, it really celebrates community. I was curious um, after that meeting, um, uh, you know, I, I was curious, okay, so we're a community of 1,700 homes or 2,300 homes if you include CSA 13. How many uh, have designer maintenance facilities? <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, and you know, even the, I would point out, even the, the celebrated uh, Civic Center, Frank Lloyd Wright Civic Center, has a very functional uh, maintenance facility. Now, there's a reason why uh, here's a college word vernac why there's a, a building vernacular to uh, maintenance facilities and and auto repair shops. And the reason is, you know, vernacular, why does a barn look like a barn? Why does a shop look like a shop? And it has to do with space efficiencies. Um, unfortunately, as nice as Bill's building looks, it's a long rectangle. And it's a large rectangle, 4,400 square feet uh, under roof uh, for three guys. Um, and what that means is there's one entrance in and one entrance out, and the movement inside there, there's a lot of wasted space. The reason why you see elongated buildings with garage bays uh, for most maintenance facilities, uh, in fact, every maintenance facility I've seen in the county um, has this basic design, is because it's most space efficient. You pull a vehicle in, you can pull it out, you don't have to disturb other vehicles, you can put tools against the, the, the wall. There's virtually no wasted space. So for about the uh, footprint uh, of about uh, 25 by 60, the, 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 uh, 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 you could have a four bay garage with a little, little office. Uh, and I think I sent you all uh, an email with some pictures. Um, with the cost savings, if we did this, these, these, these are really kind of stock sorts of plans, and I'm sorry they're not as exciting as Bill's. We can still retain Bill and, and perhaps put the, uh, 
that talent to work on a on a, a better better expression for our community. Um, I I also want to commend Bill because um, he's well aware of the uh, stream conservation setback, and he tried his darndest to to push it as far away from there. So I understand why he. He cited it where he did. It still encroaches on that area. That's going to be an area of dis dispute. And um, uh, I think if we if we scale back the ambitions uh, for that particular building, uh, we will have more money to put into other facilities. In fact, it's funny that he mentions Miwok Village because I I have been talking about uh, doing a. a, a natural playground and I think that would be wonderful to have a Miwok village type natural playground right along the banks there where a Miwok village might be uh, for, for our children. Um, imagination, you know, let's, let's think, think how we can do things better than just, just okay. Um, the, other, the other thing I want to say back there uh, a couple other observations is that you know our area that our three guys take care of it's smaller than most schools and no school has the amount of facilities plus a uh, materials depot like our guys do so um, I hope whatever goes back there that we don't do any materials uh, uh, depot or, or very very minimal um, uh, because it just takes up way too much space along a very pretty uh, spot along Miller Creek. Any other um, two quickies. <coughs> One, I was reading the report that the district manager got from some study about the birds and the bees and the fish and everything. Um, it was talking about the birds and the nesting critters and the times that the eggs are there and the babies are being born. It said the, something about demolishing the area over the winter. Do, does anybody know when we're going to be demolishing the old maintenance stuff? And is the plan to be over the winter so we won't disrupt all these little critters everywhere? There's no timeline set at this point. I'm sorry? There's no timeline set. No timeline yet? Point. Okay, thank you. And then the other thing was, I just was, was very curious because it looks to me like now, the third house in from Miller Creek is going to have its entire backyard uh, just over the fence. There's going to be something there now. And I was wondering if the third person in from Miller Creek was at the Park and Rec meeting when the presentation was given. That's Donna. Yes. Excuse me? Yes. Yes? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. OK, thank you. Hi. Right, any final discussion? I just uh, finally say that uh, if I were critiqued as nicely as you just did, Stephen, and all things in my life, I would be such a lucky man. <laughs> so thank you for uh, for your kind words. And I think you make you know you have a lot of valid uh, um, concerns. Um, I'll just say in terms of you know design issues, a couple things. Um, you know, vernacular um, architecture is definitely um, you know should be appreciated and looked at as as um, sensible models. And I think this actually as kind of a, a simple shed type of structure is, is trying to use a little bit of that um, rather than having any other kind of more modern reference. You know, there's plenty of old sheds that are just, you know, pitch, single pitch groups. Um, I do think that the, uh, that the decision, if it needs to be changed or made or further refined about the degree to which this building is a, is a garage versus a workshop versus a mix of both, uh, it affects how, how it's designed. And, and uh, specifically, you know, what, I, what, what was coming through to me and what you're seeing uh, materialized is, is that it's not specifically just a garage, that there is a lot of work that's done, and there's work that's done outside currently where things are left repaired outside, which really should be done in more of a protective, you know, environment. So if, if there's, you know, that direction could certainly go a different way, garage versus workshop. You know, um, and uh, 
Then, then finally, just in terms of uh, you know how that would reflect on what you, what anyone would kind of sensibly do if it were more of a garage and had more garage doors. My personal concern was that um, when you line the facade with garages, that's what it's going to look like, and you know um, there is a intention here to care about the look of what people see because we can sort of say, well, it's a maintenance shed, or it's just a you know an auto garage. Um, and that's fine if you take that typical model, auto garage and maintenance shed, and it's behind a building and it's hidden away, or it's in a you know it's on East Francisco Boulevard and it's just blends in with the other industrial stuff. But as soon as you put that prototype, that type, in a, a, a you know beautiful area, what should be a, a more beautiful area, um, I think you need to decorate it and dress it up. And, and I think there would be a lot of people who uh, would react very negatively if they saw. You know, a what's well, torn down there now, and a very much garage-looking <laughs> building was put up. So I think that the district the board has to decide where does the community put the value in that space? Does it come along? Does the site location basically move you to a point where you have to spend a little bit more money for the quality of the design there because of where it is, um, or not? You know, it's now, I'm, I'm not saying. If, Driving as the architect, I'm just saying that's what you're seeing reflected. It's a little bit of a, you know, it's not trying to be a time hall. It's just trying to say like this isn't a, this is not, you know, back of house uh, area that doesn't matter how it how it looks. Um, so that that's that's where that's coming from. It could, it could go a different way. One quickie. I had the pleasure of sitting in on I think the first meeting with Bill to scope out what the parks guys. And Eric thought was needed there, and they were all feeding in their desires, and they had some sketches they had put together. And I think you know from that information and a little bit of competing uh, ideas that, that Bill has come up with a really creative and usable and not looking like a maintenance shed uh, in an area that has site constraints. Uh, I, I thought it was very creative to say, okay, that maybe that modular building has just about used up its useful life anyway. Let's use that space and not, you know, stay as far from the creek as we can and keep the building still as low as we can to not impinge on the neighbors too much. And, and it, it's, I just hope we can afford it. That's a good point. And that is, you know, we'll see. Yeah, well, I think it's beautiful and I'm really, surprised, I think, in a way, and, and grateful that you're working on this bill because I think it's like a perfect skill set and experience and knowledge about the community to, you know, value the aesthetic component of it because I think that in some ways, yeah, putting, taking, you know, an old dilapidated whatever's there and, you know, what, what do we do with it? And I think here's an opportunity to leave something more beautiful than what was there before. And I don't know that we often get that opportunity. Sometimes it's just, you know, business slogging along, and this, I think, is really, I mean, these, these pictures. I'm like, oh, I want to go work there. <laughs> so, well, I had a professor who, who, who said, really made a really impression, strong impression on me, and he said, you know, any building is, to be honest, a scar in the landscape. If the landscape is the pristine, beautiful thing, you know, uh, any building is going to be a scar, and our job is to try to make the most beautiful scars <laughs> we can afford and, and, and come up with. Great. I love it. I All think right. there's one thing that that's missing on here. Where are the piles of of rocks and sand and ground cover going to be? Is, exactly. is there a place for the piles? Mm -hmm. and stuff? That, that's what we talked about with your first question in that forecourt area, or it could also go in the in the half court area. Everything will really? be behind the wall. Yeah, See, that's, that's the oh my god! Just functionally, I. Oh, that's fabulous. I, that's that's why a, a rectangle is not going to work for you there. That's that's. I think if you look at it from the aspect of workflow, it, it doesn't work. Even your well, I, I was following on yep, uh, Linda. Raise hand that calling you. Okay. Did you call Linda? Wow. So we're going to move. Thank you, Bill, for coming. And sure. we are going to move on to recreation and park maintenance activity reports. So Luke, take it away. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we had our second annual homebrew happy hours, our um, last event before the summer. And we had a surprisingly big turnout, and uh, went really well. We had a great accordion, a 
accordionist, I think is the right word for yeah. that, uh, that uh, Bill helped us procure his uh, um, which was great. And uh, I was going to thank uh, Damian Perry. I want to thank him for um, being the driving force behind our um, the homebrew community and providing the, the lion's share of the of the beer for the event. <coughs> and, uh, so it was great. And um, I was un unable to be there, so thanks to Carolyn and Robin for, for doing a lot of work um, for that, or all of the work for that. Um, <laughs> anyway, our next event will be the first installment of the music series um, in summer, so we're looking forward to uh, having that all finalized, and we'll announce that uh, lineup pretty soon. Um, we're going to have a couple of the last, um, the last bookings for that. Um, dates are set, though, right? The dates are set, yeah. So I'm um, just... Uh, I'd just like to commend whoever made the Fridays not be uh, a packet day. Uh, you're very welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so, means it's not the Friday before a board meeting or a or packet meeting. day. So uh, those it. are busy days. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so that's uh, our next event coming up will be those. We're currently just continuing to prepare for for summer, uh, making a bunch of plans for the, for the camps and for activities and for our events and uh, ordering supplies, hiring staff, um, and just doing a lot of training and brainstorming how we're going to um, make this the best summer yet. Uh, we've got a lot of focus on trying to revitalize our Marinewood merchandise, you know, the wood uh, shirts and sweatshirts and hats. We're going to, um, we're kind of updating all of that and, and want to sort of revitalize uh, our brand and really get everyone excited for, for all of our stuff um, by bringing some of that out before summer. So when that's in the works, um, we just uh, the pool's up and running. Uh, it's, uh, we just completed our first month. We had our first swim meet last Saturday. Uh, I guess a few Saturdays ago. Um, just the time trials went really great. It makes me feel like um, that this is going to be a great uh, swim team season. We got done super early and organized, and they cleaned up super fast. So I'm uh, hoping that's a, a good omen for the rest of the season. Uh, we're hiring lots of uh, lifeguards and pool attendants right now for the pool and getting our summer staff um, put together. And I'm looking forward to all of the college lifeguards and uh, senior lifeguards returning uh, to take some of the, um, the, the job uh, away from me. And, um, and the biggest announcement would be that we have, I can announce it right here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hired uh, finally it's our- It's right. Um, it's in right, well, I just, you know, I guess I, I, guess I can say it. Um, a new recreation supervisor has been hired. Her name is Lacey Merriman. She comes from uh, Benicia, uh, and we're, she starts tomorrow officially. So um, we've had some uh, training orientation with her last week, and, and she seems like she's going to be a really great fit. So I'm really excited to not be doing uh, two jobs and be able to get her, um, you know, get her going, and, and we really look forward to uh, what she can do for uh, more seeing the pool and, and you know, all the other things. And hopefully we can uh, introduce her to you uh, in the next meeting um, or in the meantime. So that's the right side of things. Um, and Luke's first time off request will be coming, I'm sure, tomorrow morning. As well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been challenging, but it's been a good learning experience. Uh, on the park side, uh, weeds, 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 weeds are our big priority right now. And I'm sure you guys notice they're just they're, they're popping up all over the place, and we're just trying to get a handle on it and get ahead. And the guys are doing part of work trying to. Uh, take care of that. Uh, taking care of some, some repairs in the, in the pool and um, just trying to clean everything up and get the picnic areas and the parks all ready for the summer season. So uh, they've been hard at work uh, with all of that. And um, somebody brought up bowls. I think that was that you, Leah? Yeah. So uh, we've just got some uh, continuing issues with gophers and moles. And this year, a new critter that we get to deal with is a bowl that we haven't had uh, in anyone's memory that from our parks crew, but they're little mouse looking like creatures that make really um, small but deep holes and they're really hard to get rid of. Uh, but our gopher company has um, actually been doing a great job and so we're almost, um, I think we're almost over that, that hurdle. So, um, are you guys any, have any questions about any of the parks directors? Um, my question, I'm super excited about the new merchandise. Is there like a CP or like, like yeah, we can probably do a sneak peek soon. We have to. Yeah, um, yeah, we can. Yeah. Not in like the other. Yeah. Okay. So a couple of tweaks, a couple of new stuff. So yeah. yeah. Any more ladies? Shirts? Stuff? Of course. <laughs> oh, of course. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, I wanted to commend Luke because I was a cool 
last week at like 8 o'clock in the morning, and I was so surprised to see Luke standing at the check-in desk. I was like, what are you doing here? Yeah, what am I doing here? Uh, <laughs> so thank you for putting in the extra everything to oh. get through the, the, the little hump here. Of course, of course. Hi, Bill. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. See you, Bill. Um, any questions, comments, uh, discussion from the board? Any questions, comments from the public? Um, I was just wondering when the foxtails are going to be cut down on the panhandle. Uh, specifically, which uh, which part of the panhandle? Did a bunch of all the whole part of it. Uh, they did that today, actually. Yeah, they did a bunch today. I'm sorry. They, there was a bunch cut down today. I was just walking by there at 3 o'clock and I didn't see anything cut down. Oh, well, they've uh, done a big part of it today with the flail mower, so um, they're going to continue tomorrow with some more of it. So um, I'm not sure which part you were walking in, but yeah, they took care of a lot of that today. Okay. And then the um, also the foxtails that are on the pedestrian lanes, it seems like one side was cut, but the other side was not and the old stuff is still laying down. You, you leave the old stuff the, down. Uh, which pedestrian lane or lanes are you referring to? Well, uh, the one that I always enter into from Pinewood to Quiet. Pinewood to Quiet. Yeah, um, so that's part of the um, our, our, outs our uh, contract. Our outsource design does that. So right. if they're, I haven't had a chance to look at that specific, I'll take a look at it. But if they're leaving something that needs to be cleaned up, I'll let them know. Yeah. But, um, they, yeah, they shouldn't be leaving. A it seems like uh, one uh, side was cut, the other side was left, and the side that was cut, there's just big gigantic box tails all over the place. And you know, I could, I mean, I was even thinking of pulling on myself. Well, don't trouble yourself with that. Let me know though when you see that, because I, you know, I don't get a chance to see every little walkway, and um, they are supposed yeah. to be getting those. So um, there are. New supervisor is very receptive, and if they have a if there's an issue that we need to address, they're, they're pretty good getting out there if they missed something or forgot something. So. Well, the only reason I'm asking is because so, hundreds of dogs go through there every day, and foxtails, you, it costs three, four, five hundred bucks to remove at the emergency. So right, it's yeah. very expensive, and both my dogs have had foxtails um, from gotcha. their feet. So, I mean, it's a big expense. Well, like I said, yeah, let me know if you have uh, those concerns like that, we'll, we'll make sure that they address okay. that. Yeah. Thank you. So, I, when the, my neighbor, uh, we, we have different views on this. Uh, foxtails are out there, and to me, um, this really points to why we need a plan for our open space. And uh, the, the improved areas over here, but also that area over there. I was walking down there, I saw everything mowed down, and I was talking to neighbors, and they were like, what the hell happened? Um, I, you know, you guys are still driving on the, most of the damage on, the, on, on that yes. area of the park, uh, park is created by our maintenance department and I just find it inexcusable. Now personally, I think it's far more beautiful, fox sales and all, with the natural um, grassland. It uh, has more animals, uh, it has a, a, a better feel, as opposed to a, a, a rude hardscape that you walk through. To get rid of fox sales, I guess you'd have to pave back there, but I think it's kind of an unreasonable uh, level of care for a uh, natural area. Uh, I have three dogs and I'm concerned about foxtails too, but I try to keep them away from them. So um, I guess you're hearing 180 degrees <laughs> different than, than what Linda is saying. I'd rather you not do that and I'd rather we have a plan of action uh, as opposed to just responding to the squeaky wheel of the moment. Um, yeah, just to speak to that real quick. So yeah, the, um, a lot of the impetus for mowing uh, for the flail mower and taking down the weeds uh, and foxtails in that area has been requests of all the neighbors along that area for one for all the fire. neighbors. No, no the uh, sub neighbors. The neighbors that have requested it all live along there. The ones that we did. Okay. Um, for one is is for fire protection and something that we've done historically, and also to keep the path. 
uh, clear, you know, people that are walking the path. So just path maintenance as well as uh, the, the area leading up between the path and, and people's fences uh, as a service to them. Um, the rest of it, you know, is plan to keep, you know, natural. Okay. And, and I do want to also say what Linda said. The walk streets, yeah, they just mow and they leave the grass down, and that is actually a fire hazard. They, they need to start picking that stuff up. So, um, I, you know, I wish we had more people enthusiastic about what we have here. I feel like I'm like the lone voice for the nature. I, I realize that's probably not true, but, but we really need to look at this as our greatest resource. And it's a shame that we don't really, it, it, it doesn't require more care, it just requires a level of attention. Um, and we can, we can make it beautiful. No, you know, you look at the other parks, they don't care for their parks like we do. It's okay. awful. Thank you, Stephen. Okay, I, I hate to go into this, but I, I, I just want to check on Stephen's semantics because tonight and our previous meetings, You've criticized the park guys for driving around in the open space. And, and my point is, I don't know what you mean by open space. All of this park parcel, including the panhandle, is not open space. Is well, that what you mean? Well, or where they, are they driving? Okay, so, so this was before you, you came. The, this was during Tom Horn's time. He said, you know, basically everything from the maintenance shed back to... Uh, uh, Las Galinas, that's open space. We care, it's a different level of care. Here, you know, we're, we're weeding, we're doing everything else, which is fine, but that area is, is to be, remain open. Now, it didn't, it looks like the back of a farmer's, you know, they, I mean, they've used that, they've been terrible back there, leaving concrete and driving all over everything, and, and, all we have to do is just pay attention. Don't make 40-foot-wide roads. You don't and have that to isn't my it. concern, Stephen. I just okay. wanted to know what, pe what piece of property you were referring to. Yeah, you so that's now it. answered. The panhandle. Yeah, the panhandle, which I don't consider open space. No. That's part of the park. Yeah, it is. Well, it, it, care-wise, it's open space. Okay, that's, it, it, it had a different... I hear, I hear you. Yeah, I just, okay. Now I know what you're talking about. All right. It's Got not. it. It's not Lucas Valley Estates, that's for sure. All right, so the date of the next Park and Recreation, Recreation Commission is May 22nd. Uh, anything else, Luke? I'm sorry. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, item J, new and other business. Request for future meeting agenda items. Anybody? Anything from members of the public? Yes, I'm going to request again that there be a written policy for communication response from the district manager. We started the meeting by rejecting that idea and um, not spending any time whatsoever to create a policy that constrains the district manager to reply in any time frame. Um, thanks for the persistent um, proposal, but we have other policies that take precedence over that one. So you leave your residents hanging? No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying well, I'm not going to okay. treat. Here's, here's one of the reasons why I'm asking is because last year, uh, Ms. Green complained about me taking so much staff time writing numerous emails. And when I went back and looked at the number of emails I had written in eight months, it was eight emails. But three of the emails were follow-up emails because I had not received a response from my email. So what you're saying is it doesn't matter how long it takes. I'm, I'm not saying that necessarily, no. I'm just saying that I don't think, we, I think we have other policies that take precedence over that policy. I don't think we need a written policy. I think the district manager, uh, number one, we have staffing constraints. Um, both of our administrators have more than ample things to do. If they can get to your response, they will certainly respond. But I don't think we need a policy Five to dictate emails that. emails in eight months? <clears throat> Please. I also think that a, poli a policy for one or two individuals does not make any sense for the district to pursue. Well, I'm also bringing it in because of one of my neighbors never, ever received a response either. So I think this matter is, you know, 
done. Um, I'm going to close it out. No, hang on. I, you didn't ask me, and I do. I want to follow up uh, because I do think that this is yeah, a reason. I, I saw you raise your hand. I did not recognize you. So just as I well, I'm talking. We. I thought you looked at me. I thought you were recognizing me. You don't recognize me. I did not give you. So let's again. We, we just. Okay. Go ahead. Forum. I'll so wait for you to. So. Are there any other comments from the public? Sure. So I, think I would like to address the so board now. Can you raise your the hand? The board, uh, first of all, I think. And then, the, wait, uh, and then wait to be called on. Uh, you know what? You know, play your games someplace else. I, I'm just going to talk, okay? Yes. No, that's exactly what we just passed a policy. Oh, well, really? Do you want to arrest me then? We can always just adjourn the meeting. Okay, let's do that. Um, so I suggest so you take a uh, civics course, Jeff. Okay, so I'm and I also, I also, look, I am going to talk because I actually, you, you made the, the announcement. It's uh, uh, you wanted a, a response from the public, and now you're just playing games. And and really, this is a kind of silliness that doesn't really need to happen. You don't have to like me, Leah. I don't really particularly like you too much. I try, but. Uh, but I, the, the issue, the issue here, is how we conduct our meetings, how we uh, run the local government, and I, I really think that if you can't, if you have to have a policy where you, where you don't allow the public to speak, and you will not respond to the, the public's uh, request, or you, uh, you will not direct our general manager to uh, respond. You guys are way out to lunch, okay? Way out to lunch. There is no local government, as far as I know, that gets away with the monkey business that you guys get away with. I would like to see, I would like to see that you respect Linda. She, as you know, she's been more of a benefactor than all of us combined for the district. And it's important that you show respect and deference. And, my gosh, Jeff, you should be the one. She she won't knock doors for you. You should be the one that, that defends her. I have nothing more to say. You have a very good night. I grew up with school boys. Hey, Stephen. Yeah, let's go on to recognitions and board member items of interest. Anyone got anything? I, we did a couple, I'm going to make Dan run a nice plaque for the department, thank you, and we'll give him that. We had a slide, two volunteers recently just get hired. Um, Dan been a firefighter? He's been a volunteer with us for about two and a half years, and he's been a firefighter for about almost 18 months. So he's been around for almost four years. So. Uh, and two of our volunteers just got full-time positions also. We took our own one in Sacramento. So. Um, really good. good job training. Retrain them up. <laughs> <laughs> Luke already mentioned it, but again, uh, Damien came through for that homebrew event. Uh, it was really popular. We had probably, I don't know, 16 people show up. Uh, and he came and he did all pouring and he did everything else. Uh, what's that? I said more than that. More than that. <laughs> it, it was a really popular event. It went really smooth. It went really fun. Uh, he put a lot of work and effort and time into it. So. Uh, uh, he knows where we'd be all at, but again, it should be acknowledged. Damien came through really big and also had other people from some of his various clubs come out and help out, too. That's great. Anyone else have anything? All right, do I have a motion to adjourn?